Welcome back, fourth graders. Back for some more math videos. Today we're going to go through lesson 8, 9, and 10. If you have more questions after that, just go to the math chat or learning lab on Zern and it should walk you through some more examples. So lesson 8 is all about understanding. That says use understanding of fraction equivalents to investigate decimal numbers on the place value chart expressed in different units. So they're going to take this amount as a decimal. They want us to write it as a mixed number, and then how many tenths would that be and how many hundredths would, it be, would that be? And it sounds confusing, but if you just think of money, it becomes pretty simple. So um, one thing to look at is just if you read this number correctly, you'll be able to write the mixed number just fine. So if you read this, 4 and 2 tenths, because it's in the tenths place, 4 and 2 tenths, then you're fine. If you're reading that as 4.2, then you have to do some thinking to figure out what to write over here. For this, they want us to think about how many dimes or tenths would be in this number. And it may sound confusing at first, but if you just think of this as an amount of money, $4.20, it's pretty easy to think about how many dimes that would be. Okay, so we'd have 10 dimes in each dollar, so we'd have 40 dimes, and then we'd have two more dimes right here. So that would be 42 tenths. Okay, same thing with pennies. How many pennies or hundredths would it take to make $4.20? And that would just be 420. Okay, I'm not going to write a hundredths. You do the same things here, but that's the idea. But if you think about money, think about dimes, how many dimes would go into here or how many pennies would go into here, uh, that makes it a little easier. All right. Lesson nine uh, it says, use the place value chart and metric measurement to compare decimals and answer comparison questions. So it says, Doug measures the lengths of three strings and shades tape diagrams to represent the length of each string as shown below. Isn't that what we would all do with string? Right? Make a tape diagram? Express in decimal form the length of each string. So the first thing you need to notice is that these are divided into 10 bigger chunks, these size squares. Okay, so he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 10, or 5 tenths filled in so far. You can also think of this as like a dime. So he has five dimes. And then you can think about these as pennies. Uh, one, two, three, four. Is that four? It's hard to see in here. I think that's four. Okay. So five dimes and four pennies. That's why they're breaking it up into smaller amounts. And then you do the same things here. Okay. But let's look at the next one to help us compare. All right, so it says compare the values below using greater than, less than, or equal to. Yes, grams, milligrams, kilograms. This is what you guys are all working on right now, I'm sure. So if they have the same place value as the last number, it's really easy to compare. This is 0 0.8, 0 0.6. It's easy to see that 0.8 would be bigger. What is hard is when you see a number like this, 36 seems like it should be bigger than 5, but this is really 5 dimes, and this is 36 pennies. And we know that 5 dimes is really worth 50 cents. So this is why it's tricky, but why it's super helpful to think about money. Okay, we know that 50 cents is greater than 36. Uh, same thing here. This you can just write 0 0.40. Okay, we know that four dimes is worth 40 cents, and then you can check and make sure that you're still on the right track. All right. Okay, lesson 10. It says use area models and the number line to compare decimals and record comparisons using greater than, less than, and equal to. So it's, this is the same idea, just using different models to show or to compare. So $10.03, this is $10.10 and 10 cents and 20 cents and 30 cents. So if that helps you think about it, $10.03 is 
there's 10 cents, so one, two, three, and $10 and 30 cents is way over here. Okay, so then it's easy to see. But sometimes without putting that zero there, it's confusing, um, or it's even confusing to plot it on a number line. So if you just put the zero there and think about everything in terms of money, it really does help. All right, last couple to look at today. Same thing, 3.9, 3.09. This is really like $3.90 or $3.09. Uh, if you do come across these, it is helpful, if you're ever using paper and pencil again, <laughs> to write what they're actually telling you, two ones and four hundredths. It's helpful to write it out and then it's easy to compare because then we know that this is like $2.40 which is greater than two dollars and four cents. All right. Okay, that's it for this week. We want you to try and finish lessons eight, nine, and ten for Zern by Friday. If you finish early, go ahead and jump on Prodigy. We have it set for any area, any content in math that we've taught in fourth grade so far, or work on extra fact practice, play a math game, um, check out some of the other math websites. All right. See you again next week.